What's up everybody, it's Devin. And today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make a recirculation chamber for your still. Now, people ask us this question fairly often. You know, they ask us, how do I set up a recirculation chamber? Do I need one? You know, what's the most efficient way to get water to my condensers? And there's a lot of answers for that. Really, it depends on your situation and what you have available to you. Some people will just use an attachment they put on a regular faucet. That's personally what I do. It works fine for me. Doesn't really change my water bill all that much. So, you know, if that's what you have available to you, then you can do it that way. You can do something like this as well. There's just so many different ways that you can set up your hoses here. But we're just going to go over the recirculation chamber today. I'm not going to go over all that stuff because that's a whole nother video in and of itself. So as you can see, I've got my still all set up. This is our eight gallon, two inch dual purpose pro. I have all of my hoses out here ready to go. I already have, as you can see, the hose clamps here. Um, here, move this. I have the hose clamps here already on the hoses. That's sort of just the easiest way to get these attached. You know, get your hose clamps nice and loose, put them on the hoses, and then they'll just slide around to those nipples and then you'll tighten. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do for you guys today is I'm also gonna show you how to set up a daisy chain, is what we call it, for your hoses. So essentially how that's going to work is you're going to have your hose line coming into the still coming to this bottom nipple right here, the very bottom nipple on your final product condenser. So let's get our hose for that. I'm gonna use this one right here. Like I said, clamps are already on there. So we're just gonna slide it on there and get our hose clamp nice and tight. You know, you don't want any water flying out. I've made that mistake a couple times myself by not tightening these enough. I'll turn on my water and suddenly it's just, oh my God. It's like Water Country USA. All right. So from there, your water is going to come in to the still from here. It's going to travel up this jacket here and come out this nipple. So we're gonna get another hose and it's coming out here. So we're attaching here. Getting it nice and tight. And then from this top nipple, on our final product condenser, we are going to go into the bottom nipple on our reflux condenser. So it's essentially just gonna come over here like this, get attached there, slides right on, nice and easy. And now we're just gonna tighten that hose clamp. All right. And last but not least, we have our water out. Water out is going to come through, or out rather, this top nipple on your reflux condenser. So let's just get this on here. All right. And that's it for the daisy chain hose setup. Just to reiterate, we're coming in here, water comes up, comes out here, travels through, goes into our reflux condenser, comes up, and then out. And that's just how that works. Really simple. I got that set up in less than a minute easily. So really straightforward stuff. Now here's where our recirculation chamber comes into play. I have here an eight gallon bucket. I have it filled 
about six and a half gallons. I kept a little room here just because, you know, you don't want to, no one wants an overflowing bucket. No one wants water everywhere, you know. So we're going to leave a little room here just in case. Um, we're going to have water coming in and out. So the level of the water should really be staying the same, but just, just to be safe. Like I said, no one wants water everywhere. So keeping it at six and a half gallons, you don't have to. That's just what I'm doing. I would also suggest leaving some room though, just in case you do need to cool down your water a little bit more. You know, the water coming out of the still that's going back into your bucket is going to be hotter than the water going into the still. So eventually that's going to cause all of the water in here to become more warm than cold. And when that happens, what you can do is you can add some ice to this so that it'll cool down the water going in. You can use regular ice. If you have an ice maker, that's cool. Just dump a whole thing in there. Some people use two liter bottles of soda. Just fill that with water, put it in your freezer and you know, plop it in there. It becomes a nice big chunk of ice that you can use. So, you know, save a little room for that because you might have to add some ice. You might not, you know, your water might be fine all the way through, but you might have to add some ice. So just keep that in mind. If you are dealing with your water getting hot a little quick, Ice is one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is always just getting a bigger recirculation vessel. The bigger your vessel is for your recirculation chamber, the longer that that water on the bottom is going to stay colder. All right, so for this, you're going to need obviously your bucket. I have it filled with water, like I said, and now I have my submersible pump. This is the submersible pump that we sell on our site. He's going everywhere. <laughs> so we sell this right online, and this is the one I'm going to be using today. This, you know, it's, it's the decently powerful pump. It can work with this 8-gallon unit, our 3-gallon unit, even, you know, our 16-gallon torpedo stills. If you have something a little more beefier than that, maybe you have a fluted still or a sectional still, this probably isn't going to be enough juice for you. Um, but it works really well with just sort of our more standard towers. So in the box, you're going to obviously get the submersible pump. It'll come with all these little suction cups that you'll just put on the bottom. There's nice, just really easy little things. Just slide those right in there, just like that. It also will come with three different sized hose attachments that will screw into the top, going from small to large. As you can see, there's, there's a little gasket on here and it only comes with one of these. So just take that gasket off whichever attachment you're not gonna use and put it on the one that you are going to use. I found that with the hose sizes that we carry, that the smallest attachment is the one that works the best. So I'm just gonna slide that gasket on to the smaller attachment. You simply just screw it into this hole up top. Voila, that's it. Now, I'm going to put this into my bucket, obviously making sure not to get any wires in there. You can put this into your bucket and then fill with water. I just did it the other way around just to kind of better show you guys what this looks like. So I'm going to put this in the bucket. It's going to get down there like that. It is now suctioned onto the bottom of the bucket. I'm not worried about it going anywhere. And now I'm going to get my hose line in, which is this one right here. And I'm going to come down here and attach it onto that little hose attachment. There are barbs, hose barbs on all of the different sized hose attachments for the submersible pump. So you don't have to worry about your hose flying all over the place. And now our water outline is also going to go into this bucket because obviously it's a recirculation chamber. It has to be coming and going all from the same place. So I got everything ready here. And I'm just going to plug this in. You can already hear that going. You can see water already coming through here. It looks like I do have a tiny, tiny, tiny leak. Not an issue. All right, I'm behind the camera now. I'm just sort of showing you guys kind of how this works. 
see I have my water coming in here. It's, you know, you can't really see it all too well, but it's coming in, it's coming out here. Here's our recirculation chamber. You can kind of see the water moving around there a little bit as the water is pushed out and comes back in. This is our water in line, as you can see. Look at that, going right back in there. My water level has not changed at all since I turned this on, which is exactly what you want. And there you have it. That is a recirculation chamber. Very easy, very simple, and super, super efficient. Saves you water, and what's not to love about that.